Good day, everybody. Glad you could join us as we do basically at the end of every month with the last podcast episode. We look at some of the issues and events that are going on in our society in general and look to connect them with alignment to mission and vision in our organizations. And today we kind of have a mix in those two, looking at what happened down in Texas, middle February, the weather event, huge cold, ice storm, knocking out power and heat to millions of Texans because natural gas could not flow through uninsulated pipes. Coal stacks were frozen up and wind turbines weren't able to go and spin because they weren't set up to be able to handle the cold that was seen in Texas. And the way that I'd like to connect that with alignment today is through bureaucracy and regulation. All of our organizations, we have bureaucracy and regulation that we need to manage, right? We ask a question in our Orgometrics assessment about whether there's an appropriate level of bureaucracy or whether bureaucracy hampers the ability for folks to be able to go and meet the mission and vision. Now, we here at Orgometrics do not feel that no bureaucracy is the right way to go, that no regulation is the right way to go. In order to go and have proper innovation, creative communications, empowerment of individuals to be able to go and do their job, there needs to be guardrails. There needs to be parameters in place to go and say, you know what, here's where we'd love you to go and put some real energy and thought. Outside of these parameters, the risk may be too high for us to deal with, or the possibilities for us to not be successful are so high, or the costs so large, that it's not going to be worth it for us to come up with ideas in this area. It's not worth it for us to establish processes to be able to go and support the activities that are being done in the organization. Also, bureaucracy goes and helps put tamp down the possibility for various things to slip through the cracks that can cause real harm to the mission and the vision of the organization. For if certain things happen, and we could think about hostile workplace, sexual harassment, things in the banking industry with regulation regarding the handling of people's money, a fiduciary responsibility, things of that nature. But there are also processes and bureaucracy about how to go through certain steps to be able to make certain that the right people have the opportunity to be able to go and chime in not to hold things back, that's bad bureaucracy, but to be able to be additive, like our yes and conversation with Kathy Clote's guest just the other week. But those guidelines to be able to go and say, hey, we can move fast through this, and if we try and break away from the bureaucracy, and the regulations that have been set forth, we can do ourselves some real harm. So let's take a look at how bureaucracy and regulation could have played a part in minimizing, if not completely wiping out, the possibility of millions of people losing power and heat and so many people dying needlessly. Now, throughout the country, the energy grid 
has regulations, bureaucracy on the different things that need to be done to be able to ensure the adequate delivery of power to the nation. Here in Minnesota, where I'm from, obviously that means being able to make certain that the delivery of the natural gas, the coal, the renewable energy is structured in a way that can go and handle the weather realities that we have. And even in January of 2019, we face temperatures that put so much of a strain on the system that we had rolling blackouts that caused some real damage. So it can happen, even with the guardrails that are in place. But the guardrails, the regulations, the bureaucracy that's established is under the guise of the mission that power and heat are not just commodities to be able to be sold at the lowest price, but critical infrastructure. That without it, communities suffer, people suffer, the economy suffers. Businesses looking to try and fulfill their mission suffer. So under FERC, F-E-R-C, the National Energy Resource Council that goes and sets up proper guidelines to be able to go and structure what power providers and grid operators can and should do to be able to go ensure a certain level of reliability of the system. Texas doesn't sit in that structure. Back in the 30s, they did not want to have such federal regulations. Through their culture of Texans, the Lone Star State can do it better themselves under a free market economy without bureaucracy, without regulation. And the markets will take care of things. What the Texas culture and market did was to state, we don't want to spend the money to go and insulate, weatherize our equipment to be able to go and cover a minuscule, as what they saw, risk of the system in cases of ice storms, very cold weather. And in 2011, the same FERC organization made the Texas grid authorities aware that this really could happen in the near term. That such a weather event could cause some pretty significant impacts on the system. But Texas government, Texas corporations, they made the choice. They set the guardrails in such a way with the mission of letting the free market handle things and give them the opportunity to be able to go and deliver at the lowest cost and the largest profit that they could. Texas government, Texas corporations, and quite honestly, Texas citizens said the mission of this is to give power at the cheapest price to maximize the profit capability of the power providers and the retail operators. They didn't see power as a critical infrastructure resource. Because when we look at this power, Texas for the majority of it, sits on its own grid with very few links to the federal system. So they went and made the risk management choice. Should we go and expend the resources and the money to weatherize our infrastructure with the possibility that we may never get a return 
on that investment with a catastrophic weather event like we saw. In exchange for that, they knew they were taking on this minuscule percentage possibility of risk, knowing that the impact, if that risk actually came to fruition, would be huge and would far exceed the money that they saved by not doing the work beforehand. And everyone down the line said, cool. Maybe the citizens didn't feel that they had enough power to be able to go and demand such things, but they were getting cheap gas, cheap electricity. And because of the culture and the beliefs of Texans that are much more entrepreneurial and against regulation and bureaucracy, this is what they set up. And the pain that they're feeling, not only with power, but then also water as well. Texans felt like what Texans felt 100 years ago, before there was a power grid, that if there happened to be weather that brought huge ice storms with below zero temperatures, that's what they faced. And with electricity, and heat that had become essential services, now they saw what it was like. So you as a leader in your organization, what can you do to be able to go and make certain that the levels of bureaucracy and regulation within your business support your efforts to be able to go and obtain that mission that you have set forth. First, do a nice review of the guardrails that you have set in place. Are they more blocks and rocks in the road that you need to remove that really keep you from achieving the mission and vision? Is it bureaucracy and regulation to be able to help people keep their jobs and have certain power? Or are they facilitators to be able to help drive innovation and empowerment. Do you need some guardrails? Is the communication and creativity that you have going on all over the map? And you need to be able to go and put some, so to speak, blinders on there for people to be able to go and focus and say, oh, this is the direction that you'd like us to be able to go and consider. That helps us a lot. That takes away a lot of this energy we're putting into stuff that isn't going to work. And while we're frustrated because all these ideas that we come up with, we decide not to go with. This helps me a lot. So you can have honest conversations with your fellow leaders and even down to the front lines about what could be appropriate guardrails regulations, bureaucracy to be able to get things done. That risk management assessment, take a look at that and go and say, here's the risk we're trying to manage. Have things changed? What would be the implications of the choices we make if that risk comes to be? How hazardous will it be on our operation? on us fulfilling our mission and vision. Could this be catastrophic for us? And then make those hard decisions of whether or not you need to make some adjustments and incur some costs to be able to make sure you are covering critical bases. It's an interesting look on the conversations, the history of Texas and politics and business to see how what happened last week happened because of the culture and the purpose of Texas politics and business. And it will be interesting to see now that they've seen the ramifications of this risk happening and with climate change, the likelihood of this risk happening again, 
will there be changes to at least the power and energy structures to be able to go and see that resource a little differently and look to put some guardrails to make sure that mission and vision is served as a higher priority than reducing costs and making money. A little bit of how our society and events that are occurring from it connect with our day-to-day operations. Hope you got something out of this podcast episode. Feel free to leave a comment, send me a note. Love to be able to go and hear your feedback on what you think of the podcast here. Also, to let you know, our book, The Art of Alignment, releases today, as of this taping, February 23rd. The book is out. Head on to Amazon or wherever you go and get your books and search for The Art of Alignment by Art Johnson. It's already an Amazon bestseller. Great feedback from different people on how they're liking the book, telling their friends about it. It's a great read about how you can go and look at your organization from the lens of alignment to mission and vision and be able to go and integrate some of the practices across the nine pillars to be able to go and help build the capacities of fellow leaders and all employees to be able to go and strive to the mission and vision of your organization. Go ahead and pick it up today. We'll see you next week for another episode of the Misadventures and Organizational Misalignment Podcast. Have a great day. Cheers.